Welcome to Craft School. We're gonna continue our crepe paper flower series with actually one of the hardest flowers that we've made. Now, don't let that fool you because it doesn't take a lot of skill, it just takes a lot of time. The center has 100 petals, and once you have those cut, the method that I'm gonna show you is easy for you to do. The rose breeder, David Austin, developed the original Juliet Rose. It took him 15 years to create this beautiful flower. And when he was done in 2008, he sold it for $5 million. So you can see how special this rose is. And you know, when you think about it that way, 100 petals, that's nothing. And we are using my extra fine crepe paper because it's so delicate and it's perfect for this rose. For my tools, I'm using a hot glue gun, low temperature, and some glue sticks needle nose pliers with wire cutters, some scissors, and optional is pinking shears. For materials, I have blush extra fine crepe paper and cypress extra fine crepe paper, stem tape, 18 gauge wire. You will also need this pattern and you can download and print it below. It also includes the steps for this rose. The first thing you're going to do is cut out your patterns. And something I want you to notice on your patterns is we have these grain lines marked on each one. This is really important. So when you're working with your crepe paper, you'll notice that the grain lines are all in one direction. We've talked about this before, but it's something to remember. I'll cut a strip. I'm gonna use the small pattern first. I'll cut a strip about the width of the pattern and then I will align the pattern right along the grain line. The nice thing about cutting this extra fine crepe paper is you can stack it and do multiple cuts at once. I like to do between four and six in my stack. There's four, let's go ahead and do six. That makes things go a lot faster, especially when you have 100 petals to cut out. So there we are, my grain line's going the right direction and then you just cut around your pattern. I've cut out 100 of the small petals and 18 of the larger ones. And now I've cut this rectangle shape. The thing I like to do with the stamen of the flower is if you use pinking shears, you don't have a blunt edge. You have more of a pointed edge, which always looks prettier. And I'll take my regular scissors and cut little tiny eyelashes, or the stamen, the center of the flower, just like this. So I've cut out two of these large leaves, five of these, which actually go on the back of the rose once you're finished, and then here's my other leaf. And I'm gonna show you the trick that I use for cutting these leaves. You'll notice that the grain line is a little bit at an angle, and this is the center of the leaf. I'll place that onto my paper. I just have one layer here, and cut that side of it. It's usually about a 45 degree angle anyway and then I'm going to turn that around so that I have two layers that go the same direction and cut the leaf out, and I'll show you why we do it this way. So when you glue these together, you'll open it up and put them line to line, and that gives almost a natural leaf shape with the, the grain of the crepe paper actually makes it look more like a realistic leaf. The next step is to take all 100 of these small petals and shape them into a cup form. And we'll do that by using the thumbs and stretching the center very, very gently. Now, you don't wanna stretch around the edge because if you do, it will flatten, you won't get the cup form. And you'll wanna stretch it all the way in the center. Something like that. The next step is to take five petals at a time and glue them together. You'll want your grain to go up and down and you'll put the bead of glue right along the grain of the paper. So we'll glue them in stacks of five and then we'll keep combining until we have the full center of the flower. I finished my sets of five and I have 20. I've combined them into piles of five each and we're going to take the same side of the glue, add a little bit of glue along the grain line and put the second set of five on top, but you wanna stagger it to the left because you want this to eventually rotate all the way around. Make sure you get the right, the glued side onto the glued side because you don't want those to be closed up. So there's my set of five and you can see how that staggers over to the left. The four sets are done, so we'll continue doing the same thing until we have a full circle. So I'll stagger the second set and as you can see it starts to curl around the third
and then the fourth, then I'll go back in here, add a line of glue, and close it up. And that is 100 petals. Next I'm taking one of my 18 gauge wires and my wire cutters and I will create a loop at the end of my wire. And the reason I do this is so it has something to grab onto. You want as much possible that your glue can grab onto. If it's just the wire, it easily slips off. I'm going to add some glue to the tip and then take this piece, the one that we cut into these little tiny eyelashes, add some glue right along the edge and then roll it around the wire. So I'll take my petals, slide that right onto the wire. I'm going to add a lot of glue, a lot, a lot of hot glue. Try not to spill it. And then gently pull that right into the center. And I'll crush it with my fingers at the base and let it cool. Once that's cool, I'll turn it over and fill this up with glue because you really want this to stay. That will take a few minutes to cool. So now I have my 18 larger petals and I'll do the same thing as I did on the smaller petals where I'll stretch it as far as it will go but leave about a half an inch around the edge because you, you want it to cup as much as possible. Sometimes this takes just a little bit of practice to know how much to stretch and you know how to not get cross lines when you stretch too quickly, but it's a lot of fun. The way that I assemble these smaller leaves is to add just a bead of glue onto one edge, to be very gentle and quick because you don't want that to cool, and then place the other overlapping very, very slightly. And once that's cool, you can give it a little bit of shape if you want to by stretching it out. If you want to add leaves onto the stem, this works great if you have a one stem and a vase. But if you want to make a bouquet, you may not want to put your leaves on the stem because they'll be hidden and then they're sort of useless. So one of the techniques that I like to do is take an 18 gauge wire and put a little glue just on the end, place it onto the wire, and then take another leaf and cross it on the back. Once these are glued together, you can put stem tape down and you have a finished branch and then add those into your bouquet. I'll do the same thing with these larger leaves, but before I glue them on, I'll go ahead and give them a little bit of a stretch. These are very simple. They just have, you know, everything's straight on the grain and then they have a little bit of cut on the side to add some detail, but other than that, they're very simple. I know my glue is cool when it's opaque and not quite as clear. And when that's done, I'm going to ruffle up the inside of this. I want it to be a little bit more natural looking and less precise. So I'll just take my hand and sort of crush a bit. Maybe pinch it with my fingers. Not, you know, you don't want to fold pinch it. And then I'll just kind of bring my fingers in here as if I'm ruffling up a child's hair. I'm gonna start gluing my larger petals on three at a time, and I'll also start a little bit higher in the bud. So right here along the edge is where I'll start, and as we add more petals, we'll go back underneath the flower, and I'll show you why. So I'll place a line of glue, and I'm gonna do that across my grain. Place the petal right on the edge, and you'll want to make sure it's really smooth as it works around the center petals because you want it to almost wrap around so three at a time to cover all the way around the rows, and this gives it a really nice rotation. Here's my second one. I overlap a bit, but want to get it around the second third of the flower and see how that's wrapping around the center. Now I'll continue in sets of three and slowly bring the petals back underneath. So the next step is to put the sepal pieces on the back of the rose, and I'm going to start by just stretching the center to give them a little bit of a shape. But before we add those onto the rose, I'll take my floral tape and I'm going to build up a hip on the back of the rose by wrapping the tape around and around until you think it's big enough. And that will actually give a bit more of a natural look to the rose. 
Once I've built up my hip with a floral tape, I'm going to take my sepal and add a bit of glue and place those right onto the back of the petals so they go up the stem because we're going to want to tape over those tips once we're done. I like adding a little bit of glue because it's easier to keep things in place when I tape it. And now I'll finish this off with some floral tape down the stem. I'm going to bend the heads of the leaves back just a little bit so that I can tuck them right underneath my rose. So this Juliet rose is a little bit more in bloom where the petals are open and this one is closed. You can do this effect by just adding a little bit of glue inside your petals and closing those up to hold them in place. Either way, these are just gorgeous. So remember when you make your Juliet roses or any other crepe paper flower to show us by hashtagging crepe paper revival so we can have a look too. And we will see you for the next craft school.